up there, uh, you can see that there's a corona up there. This is very special to us. And earlier, you could see a lot of spirit forms in there. Spirits are definitely here with us right now. Just magnificent beauty. On behalf of the Imaha Nation, um, we also have our tribal leader here, Dora Morris, known as DJ. Um, and any DJ, you might know a few people here. Yeah, I remember that. Um, uh, let me firstly welcome you to my ancestral homelands. My people have lived here since the 1500s. And, so, and we're one of the few tribal nations I don't know what you know about uh, history, but there was a lot of movement, removal of tribes from their lands, etc. We were one of the few, that may be the only ones, well, let's keep them on, that were never removed. So what happened was our land just shrunk around us. There again, I want to welcome you. I'm very, very honored that you're here and to learn more about us and more, our traditions and our heritage. I wanted to uh, touch on that a little bit, on our heritage and our tradition. We're trying to evolve into the, the world of, of the dollar bill. And at the same time, we're trying to keep our heritage and strengthen it as we go. Strengthen it in a way that we can be, uh, go par parallel and to, as to be a Native American and as to be, be able to compete and stay alive to, to continue to exist. And being that you're all um, teachers, we're from the Oahan community, and so I title it Challenges to Providing Successful Services to Native American Children and Families. You know, working with the children, you're also going to be working with the families as well. Um, and as our vice chair had explained about the, the name of Omaha, and in the Omaha language, we say Omaha. Um, and remember last year with the whole, uh, what's the Broncos player? Oh, yeah. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, and he kept yelling, Omaha, 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 and then the city of Omaha was saying, oh, you know, getting all riled up to that. And he was like, do they really know what the true meaning of Omaha means? Yeah. And this was kind of the thing, you know, and against the current book screen. Introduced to you uh, a young man that I'm really proud of personally, not only just because he's a relative, but because he carries on an, an ancient tradition. And a lot of people think that uh, Indian music is just, hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah, you know, in the, in, the, in the stereotype of wild Indian. And that's simply not true. Yeah. Um, music, of course, with any culture is very, very important. And so it is with American Indians and definitely with um, the Omaha. There were a lot of our traditions that were really warred against, and our traditional music was one of them. So yeah, finding a native flute player is actually kind of hard. Uh, there's not very many of us, as far as I know. There might be one other in my tribe, but I'm one of the only ones. I'm going to play this for you guys. And uh, I don't know if you guys want to follow me out there or just going to prop the doors open, but I'm heading that way. Function on behalf of everyone in this clan 
um, <clears throat> Gonze clan was responsible, yes, their relationship was with the wind and the unseen forces of the movement, but they were also responsible, they were keepers of the songs. So any important things that would happen, it was primarily their duty to either make a song for it or to perhaps bring in those who were going to sing that had been taught by them. So they, their responsibilities, there's other responsibilities, but in this one, it's the music. Um, the Wall Till, since 1992, has just been pretty much abandoned by all the non-Indian people uh, for a number of reasons. Yeah, this is owned by the Omaha tribe and affords some employment and some income. The probably oldest hospital, I would say, also in the area. This is where Dr. Susan Picot um, ran this hospital. This is the original place. It has not been replaced. Uh, and when you go inside, you'll get to see, just uh, like her husband said here, you can just go ahead and explore wherever you want. Staffed, just like any other hospital, but if you'll know that medical care was not what it is today, the science behind it, you know, was, was the science of the day but it was a, a very functioning, um, vital hospital that met the needs of anybody who was in need of medical care. It's denied burial in Sioux City. He died in combat, and I don't know, I think it was President Kerry uh, Gilbert Hale Truman, do you know who he is? He's the one that was responsible for dropping the town bomb on Hiroshima. Got into it with officials in Sioux City, and he allowed his burial in the uh, Arlington National Cemetery. He's buried right next to General Patton. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Nebraska Indian Community College. It's one of the newer buildings. The building we high on up to 12th grade is really hard to work with because they don't, I mean, they're interested in, in what's going on, you know, in the, in the real world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, that's probably the hard, hard part about teaching them and speaking a language that they don't want to make mistakes in front of their peers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's harder teaching them, and it's, sometimes it gets you know frustrating. And, but uh, you know they, I have to sit down and talk to them, and you know and say, "You what? This is the only place you're going to learn this. You know, your, do your parents speak it? No. Mm -hmm. So this is where you're going to hear it. You're going to." Um, you probably won't hear it out there, you know, outside of the school, and so this is where you're going to learn. And some of our traditions, I try to bring that up from, about our traditions through what I learned from my mother and my grandmother. And uh, they were, my grandparents were um, fluent speakers, and so were my parents. But they didn't push us to learn it, because they wanted us to learn English. And so I can understand the language, but I'm not a fluent speaker. But everybody here in this room joined uh, mainstream society for one thing is to gain material uh, food clothing and shelter and uh, I, every everybody in here we're galvanized by one thing everybody wants to we're in we're searchers we're searching and uh, we all belong to the tribe of Shem by the way our neighbors south of the border, they belong to that same tribe. And they have an illustrious history, just like us. We are going to the um, offices of uh, Mike Tyndall, who is the director of our tribal natural resources. Has the most interesting job. If I were 30 years younger, I would go to work in that department because he does the hunting. Um, it's hunting season is starting now, and he's out there outside all the time. As far as genetics, they're closer to a horse. They have a hoof on them. They don't have toes. Herd animals, so occasionally one will get outside the fence, but we just leave them alone. Or sometimes we'll open the gate up. And they want to be with the herd, so they'll go back in. Most of them were born inside the fence, so they know what it is. <laughs> they say, take my picture. Okay, I got your picture.
smiling for it. Oh, you don't so kill you. Let me the take it. <laughs> <laughs> Get close up. <laughs> wow. people notice that the elevation of the river right now is a little high and that's due to releasing waters from uh, Gavin Point and, and all the other dams that are upstream. Pardon me? Game violators. <laughs> Trespassing. What's more we'll get people that are, are looking for artifacts and so forth. So there's a lot of reasons for people to be out doing the illegal things. Being on the reservation, I had a totally different idea about what one looked like or what it consisted of. Oh. What were you thinking? I don't know. Some, you know, just I thought it just a whole bunch of houses around, you know, and that saw it wasn't. I never, you know, think it was this big and you know, just functioning like it is. I was, I no idea. I'm always amazed at the number of resources and the lack of resources um, that the res has. Mm -hmm. And not just this one, many of them. What I learned is that as a fourth grade teacher in the Omaha Public Schools, uh, Nebraska history is a part of the curriculum. And what I found out today that I had told a lot of untruths to my students based on people who either didn't know what they were talking about, but they didn't know that they didn't know they, they could, well, they didn't know that they knew that they tried to keep hidden about uh, the Native American. I see history as kind of, everybody wants to go, oh, it's this great thing, but sometimes history is really ugly too. And at a younger age, I think we need to expose that, yeah, there is really ugly parts of history you know, <coughs> locally, statewide, you know, but there's, you know, I thought I knew a lot and there's some things I learned today that's like, wow, this is kind of amazing and I think, you're right, we need to make people aware, but also be aware that our students maybe know this stuff and we can ask them, especially when it comes to Indigenous. <coughs> You know, because when it comes to indigenous, I think that is, there are parts of history that the very fact that I'm, you know, white and German, there's probably parts of my history, other people, you know, from my family's history, you know, I could tell you that nobody else would know, but there there just be parts of history that's been carried down through the oral tradition that we could probably learn from. And as adults, I think we need to start learning from that.